What's up Dirt Tracks fans, Luke here bringing you guys another walk around video, this time on Can-Am's Maverick Max XRS Turbo RR with Smart Shock. You can reorganize those words all however you want. It's all the same vehicle and it's pretty much a mouthful, but uh, I'm pretty excited about this thing. Before I get started though, I do wanna say that uh, if you stick around to the end of the video, we've got a giveaway and I'm gonna give you the details on how to enter that giveaway. So make sure you watch to the very end and uh, you could win some sweet Dirt Track swag. Um, also, if you like these videos, you know, the typical spiel everybody on YouTube gives you, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate it, it really helps us and it helps you not miss out on anything that we've got going on when we're up uploading new stuff all the time and we do. So, with all of that said, let's get into this beast of a vehicle right here. Now, obviously this is a Max, so it's a four-seater. It's incredibly long, um, like as a bus. And uh, it's uh, honestly, this is probably one of the most impressive vehicles I've ever driven. We've done walk-around videos on Maverick Maxes before, even on the Turbo RR. So the, the vehicle itself isn't really new. What is new though is the Smart Shock setup, and I'm gonna talk a lot about that, but I do wanna cover off the rest of the vehicle also. So this thing is basically stock. Um, it has things like these mirrors and the rear view mirror. Those are the only additions. It does not have stock tires on it right now. Um, it was sent to us with these on. These are Maxxis Liberties, but it should have carnivores on it. Uh, as far as I can tell, I find the, the Can-Am website very difficult to navigate, to figure out and find specs and what, what's what but I'm 99% sure this thing's supposed to have carnivores on it. Um, so I'm not sure why those were switched, but it wasn't done by us. We've got 22 inches of suspension travel. Um, you've got Fox internal bypass, 2.5s on the front and 3.0s on the back. Obviously they have the um, electronic adjustable uh, settings in them as well. They're built by Fox and those systems are built by Fox. So you know that they've been tested and the system works. Um, they use this stuff on trophy trucks. They use the same system on all kinds of vehicles. So uh, that's one thing you don't have to worry about is whether or not your shocks are gonna survive this vehicle. But um, I like that. Now, as far as the vehicle goes, um, it is, as I said, a max, it's super long. And that's one of the things about this vehicle that you really have to get used to and understand before you buy it as a max. Um, it is extremely long and the turning radius is massive. Um, so if you ride in a lot of tight places or you want to go around tight corners, trees, whatever, if that's how you ride, then this probably isn't a great choice for you. Um, if you're the kind of person who rides in open areas and really likes to go fast and isn't worried about tight stuff, this thing, I don't know if, I don't know if you can beat it. It's just friggin' awesome, to be honest. Um, wheels, true bead locks, uh, very important on a vehicle with, with this kind of power. This is the 200 horsepower Turbo RR. So bead lock wheels, you know, it's getting to that point where anything high performance should probably have them, but it also gives you a ton of confidence when you're ripping through the woods or if you're in rocky sections or slamming berms that you're not gonna peel a bead off the tire. And uh, that always, for me, when I'm driving, gives me an extra bit of confidence to push just a little bit harder knowing that I'm not gonna have to worry about you know, burping the tire and having it come off a bead. So I like that. I like the way Can-Am does it too. They're really nice looking. Uh, the only thing I will say, this is a tiny, tiny little gripe, but it is one that I experienced, is the valve stem is up in here, like shoved up inside this little opening, and it can be hard to get some air chucks for your compressor on it. It's also really difficult to get the cap off. I mean, really difficult is a, it's, you know, a relative term. It's annoying, that's all. It's such a tiny thing but it was something as I was checking the tire pressures on this thing that I was like, ah, oh, this is annoying. So I thought I'd mention it to you guys because I know you appreciate even those little details. Um, Can-Am does Mavericks with these sort of, I'm not even gonna call them half doors. They're some sort of door-ish item. Um, they work nice, you know, uh, the, the pull cord thing is on the inside. You can see this is how you use it is just by pulling on this. It is not on the outside. So I will say this, this pull cord does actually work to unlatch the door. I mean, it's a very positive system. What I will say as well though, is that it's, it's not the best system out there, especially when you're trying to get in the vehicle from the outside. It's a little bit annoying on the inside. If you've got slippery mud, as I experienced on your gloves and on the handle, honestly, just put a latch, just put a, a thing, that, you know, a lever or something in there. That's way better than the pull cord. Um, the doors themselves obviously are extremely sparse. There's these huge openings in here, so you are gonna get dirty. Uh, for a vehicle of this stature, 
that costs as much as this one, this should be filled in. I, I've said that about a lot of vehicles, not just K&M's, but a lot of other vehicles out there. Um, Polaris's Pro XP it really drives me nuts that there's an opening. Vehicle like this should be closed in there. So that's that's something that I'm gonna pick on. Um, now with that said, getting in and out of this vehicle isn't really that hard because the door opens like 90 degrees, so you can get way in there. Um, it's easy to get in and out of, which I really appreciate. And uh, you know, the doors are lightweight. They do have a metal frame inside with a grab handle that according to my passenger actually works and gives them confidence. So that's a good thing. The other thing about these doors I'm gonna comment on is even though they latch tight, they rattle. You can hear it right here. So a better latching system, Can-Am, you can do better than that. And I think you should. Um, gas cap, this is a funny little thing you got going on here is your gas caps under this little cover. Um, the cover actually functions perfectly fine and, you know, is easy to use. Um, it's an aesthetic thing, but I like it because it covers it up and makes it look streamlined and you don't have an ugly gas cap sticking out here. I do also like that the gas cap is up here versus way down here on a lot of vehicles. It's down by your butt on the passenger side or the driver's side. I think this makes more sense. It's, it's, if you got a five gallon can, you know, it's easy to use or you're filling it with from a pump, it's up here, you're not crouched over. Love that, it's a great idea. Um, moving on, we got the back seat. This also uses the funny latch, you know, cord thing here, handle. Um, I dislike it as much on the back as I do the front. And these doors too rattle. So there are a lot of rattles when you're going fast in the bumps, but again, it opens to 90 degrees, so it's actually pretty easy to get into the back seat. And there's a decent amount of legroom in the back seat on this. I mean, for the length of it, there should be. Um, but if you look inside here, you'll notice the cool grab handle in the middle that comes off of the middle part of the roll bar. Um, that's a really neat feature. Uh, some some side by sides, four seaters don't have much to grab onto. Uh, Can Am has really thought this one through and given you stuff. It's got like padding here so if you if you do whack your head or something or your driver isn't as good as they should be you're not going to hurt yourself uh, and these rear seats are actually adjustable believe it or not so uh, that might be the first time i've seen that so that's pretty cool um, the other thing that's cool about the interior is all four seats are nice bucket seats they're comfortable um, they're reclined at a very steep recline so it's very cart style seating but you get these retractable four point harnesses right here on all four seats, not just the front. Um, a lot of other vehicles will have these style retractable harnesses on the front and then the back is a standard four point. Um, this one has the retractable all the way around and that is awesome. That's, uh, that's the way it should be. And, and again, if you're spending this kind of money, this is not a cheap vehicle, you should be getting features like that. Um, moving on, you know, you got a sway bar on the rear uh, your standard trailing arm suspension, which is absolutely fantastic on this vehicle. It works amazing. Um, that's one thing I got to say. And when we get into talking about smart shock, I'm going to go into more detail, but this is probably the best riding side by side I've, I've ever driven. Um, your cargo bed here is, we're going to say functional, but not very, it's very shallow. Um, it doesn't go down very deep, so you really are limited just to this space. And here is where your you know, your turbo components and stuff sit under here. So you really only have this space here. There's not a lot of room to put your stuff. Can-Am sells a bunch of accessories that you can stack in here and, and you know, link accessories and stuff to make carrying cargo better and easier. Um, so that's a great thing, and you're going to want to invest in some of those. The roof, it's pouring rain today, so just so you guys know how dedicated we are to making videos for you, we're doing this one in the rain thumbs up. You, I better get a like for this one because of that. Um, but the roof, which made me think about the rain, is standard and it's a very good roof. I like it. Um, it. It keeps you out of the sun. I would put a half windshield on this. And again, I, I say this a lot about these vehicles, but when you're talking about high-end vehicles like this, like extremely high-end, top, top, top tier vehicles, I do think there should, there's features that should be included. When I'm talking about lower end vehicles or even mid-level, things like a windshield, that doesn't have to be included, but I don't know why manufacturers don't put windshields on these you know, flagship models that are the top of the line, every box is checked. Windshields should come standard. That's just my opinion. Um, moving around, we got cool, I love the taillights on this. I love the accent lights and the headlights. We didn't talk about that, but I really like those. Um, okay, so let's, Let's talk about smart shocks. Now that we're here and we've got these beautiful reservoirs sitting up here with us. So smart shocks, we've seen technology like this before. Obviously everybody's gonna just compare it to the Razor, you know. Um, 
it's not just like that. It's not dynamics. It's not the same system and it doesn't work exactly the same. And there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, Smart Shocks uses not just compression adjustments, but rebound adjustments as well. And they're done automatically. And that is probably the biggest difference between the two systems in terms of technically, how are they different? Um, or or in, a, in a grander scale, how are they different? Uh, that's pretty awesome. And I, I attribute a lot of how this vehicle rides, which I'll talk about in a second, to having rebound adjustability. Um, the other ways in it's different is has nine sensors around the vehicle um, that you know, take information, feed it into the brain, and it adjusts your suspension or the brain calculates what adjustments should be made 200 times a second. Think about that, 200 times every second. If you do the math, it's fractions, minute fractions of a second that it is making, it is deciding, making thoughts and <laughs> making thoughts, there you go, and making adjustments 200 times a second. That is faster than you can think. Um, now this vehicle is ridiculously fast, so it might not be faster than the vehicle can go, but it is very fast. So uh, I would say it's a pretty seamless experience when you're driving it. The adjustments are made so quick. I think it's, uh, well, it's milliseconds between full hard and full soft adjustment. It's, it's so short that it can go from one to the other. And those are things that it is actually best in class. Um, 200 times a second is more than anybody else. And the amount of time it takes to adjust from full soft to full hard is the fastest in the industry. So those are things that do make a difference in how the system works. Um, obviously you got these really sweet looking reservoirs mounted way up high um, with the gigantic hoses. I will say I find it weird, and actually everybody who's seen this vehicle finds it weird, that these hoses are routed on the outside of the roll bar. Now if you're ripping through the woods, this could get caught on a branch for sure. So I don't know why this isn't just flipped over and routed over here. That would make way more sense in my mind. And it is, it does swivel. So it would be easy to do that. Um, anyway, small point. So back to Smart Shock. Now what does Smart Shock have uh, in terms of settings? How does it work? Well, I'm gonna climb in the cab for this one so I can kind of show you. Little note as I'm climbing in here, this thing has so much leg room, I actually have to put the seat forward. I'm 6'1". There's not a single side-by-side -side out there that I have to put the seat forward in except this one. Everything's soaking wet, but here's your system. So you have smart lock as well. So there's smart lock and smart shocks. And why wouldn't you make them rhyme? Uh, so smart lock is your locking differential. You've got 2x4, 4x4, and in 4x4 you've got trail and trail active. Um, trail active basically just means it engages the front wheels quicker. Um, so, and then you've got front diff lock that you can actually physically select. Um, you've also got tri-mode DPS and dual drive modes, eco and sport. If you put that into perspective, there's like hundreds of different combinations that you could have this vehicle in before you even select smart shock. So it's shocking how much adjustability these vehicles have. I mean, they, ri they rival like you know, Land Rovers and stuff for, for how many adjustments. But now let's talk about Smart Shock because that's what we're here for. So you've got three settings, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Its competition has three settings as well. Comfort is exactly what you think it is. It's basically, the shocks are at a baseline of zero compression. Um, and the rebound is what's interesting in Comfort though to me. Low compression is just, of course, in your Comfort mode, you want less compression. That makes sense and that's how everyone would do it. Um, but rebound actually has a huge effect here. And what I found in driving this was that in comfort mode, if you're ripping along, say, a fire road that's got rocks and maybe some washouts and stuff in it, as you're riding fast, the rebound is adjusted to be pretty quick when you're hitting the little stuff and the wheels are staying in contact with the ground, it's rebounding really fast. But as you roll up over hills and go into valleys, you can feel the rebound is slowed down. So as you're going up over the hill, you can feel that it doesn't rise up and the, and the wheels are actually extending slower. And as you go down into the bottom, it's slowing down the compression and, and raising the compression to slow down the vehicle collapsing down into the bottom. So it's actually very noticeable in, in comfort mode. I will also say this, in comfort mode, this is the smoothest riding side-by-side -side I've ever driven. It's, it's almost shocking how smooth it is. The stuff that disappears below you is amazing. It is a comfortable, smooth ride. Comfort makes sense. Um, they should call it Comfort Plus because it's even better than normal comfort. Um, but it's incredible in comfort mode. Um, now, I 
did try a little bit of pushing it harder in some big bumps in comfort mode and it still handles it pretty well, but it gets overwhelmed. And because your settings are generally softer at the baseline, the vehicle is actually sitting down a little bit into its travel as you're going through the bumps and it does tend to bottom out quite a bit more than if you go to sport mode, which is exactly what you think it would be. If you're gonna ride aggressively uh, and just be going fast, sport mode's where it's at. Now what sport mode does though, uh, and, and this, is, this isn't just SmartShock that does this. This is basically why the system exists. But what sport mode does is it begins to control the attitude of the chassis. So when you accelerate, it stiffens the rear shock so you don't squat too much. When you brake, it stiffens the front shock so it doesn't dive in the corners. When you're cornering, it stiffens you know, the right outside, inside, whatever needs to be done to keep the, the body flat, to keep the chassis flat. And it works, it does a great job. Sport mode would be like mid-level settings, so not super soft, but not fully firm either. Um, it still rides pretty good in sport, it's not terrible. Uh, and this is a mode that you can actually ride through some big bumps with, and it isn't gonna ruin your day. So sport mode's pretty neat. Of course, sport plus is, that's, that's when you're gonna be using all 200 horsepower and it's gonna get rough. Um, sport plus puts everything way high up on the spectrum. We're talking super high compression settings. The rebound is adjusted aggressively. And this is what you're gonna want when you're pounding bumps, like hard hitting jumps, going through whoop sections. Sport Plus is where it's at and it works really well. It also is almost uncanny how well it controls body roll. I mean, it corners at speed on a fire road. I don't even think it does roll into the corner. The body stays completely level and it gives you this major boost in confidence when you're going really fast to know that you can go even faster or push yourself and not worry about that vehicle rolling in the corners. It's, it's, it's spectacular how well it works in Sport Plus and I did test it on some pretty aggressive trails that you're gonna see in the test right on this vehicle. So that's basically Smart Shock for you right there. Um, it works, it's a piece of technology. I've said this and, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say the word, but you know, dynamics, I've said this about dynamics as well. This is technology that actually makes your vehicle better. This is technology that has value and makes sense to spend money on because this makes your riding day more comfortable, uh, safer, more confidence inspiring. This is technology that works. There's a lot of technology out there and you know, some might argue that things like trail active and trail in your, in your four by four modes, maybe you don't need that. Maybe that's not technology that you need, um, but smart shock is something that adds serious value. With all of that said, and how much I like Smart Shock, there is one gripe I have. Now, Can Am, it's a, it's a gripe about this vehicle in general. This screen on a $40,000 Canadian, $42,000 vehicle is not acceptable. This isn't up to par with what the competition has. Uh, there should be a full color screen here. There should be a large display with all the information. It should be customizable. I should be able to move stuff around and put it where I want. Um, Moreover, I should be able to see my settings for SmartShock on the screen. I should be able to see, you know, what does it mean when I put it from comfort to sport in terms of compression levels. Dynamics does a great job of this, and I think that's the next thing for Can-Am. They've, they've got this stuff sorted. SmartShock's work great, this vehicle works great, everything about it is top-notch, works amazing. Um, this is the next thing that needs that needs attention. I wouldn't be surprised to see can come up with something pretty impressive here pretty soon, um, but it definitely, that is the only weak point. Um, I'm, a, I'm a guy who likes information. I like to know what's going on with my vehicle. Uh, I wanna see the compression changes. I wanna see how things are set up. I wanna know what, as I'm driving, what's happening. I love that screen on Dynamics where I can watch the compression settings change. It fascinates me. So that is something that I want out of this and I think a lot of riders are gonna want too. There's also so many other things you can do with it, you know, Bluetooth and mapping and all that kind of extra stuff that's possible um, that isn't possible with this right now. So I would like to see the gauge improved. Um, I do like how it works though, sitting here inside the, the steering wheel, that, that's excellent and works really well. Um, transmission wise, it shifts great. It never gets hung up. It's easy to use. Um, Power-wise, it's just shockingly fast. It's unbelievably fast. Too fast for 99% of people out there, I would say, I'm gonna make that statement. But if you do wanna go fast, man, this is the way to do it. This thing is aggressive. So before we go any further though, I know you guys absolutely must hear how it sounds, even though you've heard a lot of Mavericks. So I'm gonna start this one up and give it a rev up for you and you can hear it. So let's do that now. This is a three cylinder motor, three cylinder four strokes. It's just music. It is the best sound ever, ever in my opinion.
there you go. Now you've heard it. Stay tuned for the test ride coming up here pretty soon. And I did promise you guys that if you stick around to the end, the bitter end of this walk around video, that there would be more information about how to win some sweet dirt track swag, like this hat that I'm wearing. All you gotta do is comment. And what I want you to comment on is what you think about smart suspensions like smart shocks. What do you think about it? Is it, is it valuable technology to you? Is it something that you would be willing to pay extra money for? Um, is it something that you think is just more technology that side-by-sides don't need? I don't wanna hear comments about how it's making these things too expensive. There are cheaper versions of this without SmartShock. If you think this is too expensive, there are lots of options for you out there. So let's not get into that whole side-by-sides are too expensive these days. I wanna know if you think going from this vehicle without SmartShock to SmartShock is worth the price. Um, I personally think it absolutely is. Uh, so that's my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. And we will randomly pick one of the comments and that person we will contact and you will win a uh, Dirt Tracks swag pack. So definitely comment. I'm gonna reiterate, if you like this video, if this was valuable to you and you guys enjoyed it, please click the like button. It means a lot to us. It lets us know that what we're doing is appreciated and we should do more of it. Um, if you have any questions or anything else about this vehicle, comment. We read your comments, we do. And, and I try and get on and, re and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. We are uploading content on a regular basis, on a, not just weekly, multiple times a week. We're always adding new stuff. AJ and I are coming up with new ideas. Just as an example, we actually have a Razer Pro XP4 uh, sitting over on the side of the garage and we've got some stuff we're gonna do between the two to give you guys a performance comparison. That's coming up. If you don't click the subscribe button, you won't know when it's, when it's posted and you're gonna miss out on some of the most incredible con content you've ever seen. So subscribe. All of that said, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching to the end. Love doing this for you guys and we got more stuff coming. So make sure you stay tuned.